Hi everyone, this is Jim. Welcome to this postmortem of my Blitz game number 928. My opponent started off with e4 e4 here. Let's let's get the right move. e4. Went c5, he went uh, knight f3, went d6, and he went the uh, bishop b5 check. This is an interesting uh, opening line. Magnus Carlsen has played this a few times. Um, this is called the Canal Sikorsky attack in ECO, and that's uh, what I've been calling it, although it's more commonly known as the Moscow variation. And I want to say it's related to the, uh, I want to mention that it's related to the Rosalimo, but it's not the Rosalimo. The Rosalimo is uh, when black plays knight to uh, c6 on move two instead of d6, then bishop b5. So you can see it's a related structure, but this is the, the Rosalimo. And, uh, and then the way it went in the game where d6 is played, bishop b5 is most commonly known as the Moscow variation. But uh, as I said, in ECO, they call it the Canal Sikorsky attack. So uh, black has a number of options here. Bishop d7 is the main move and uh, considered uh, the best way for black to equalize, although it can uh, lead to some trades and to a quiet position. So if black is playing for an advantage, oh, I just wanted to show the uh, trades. After, after the bishop takes, you should take back with the queen so the knight can still come out to c6. That's a good square. So that's an important uh, nuance in that line, that's best play. Um, so that's the bishop d7 line. If uh, black wants to keep more material on the board and keep the position complicated, he can play knight d7, but this is not as good a square for the knight. So uh, black is uh, paying a price in order to keep the game uh, a little more complicated. But this keeps more force on the board because now white is not inclined to trade. This would be just giving up the bishop pair for no compensation at all. Uh, no, no pawn damage inflicted and no no development advantage either. So knight d7 is a way to play, but uh, white is a little bit better in that position with the more active pieces. Uh, and it takes takes black a, a few moves to, to get developed. Um, so I go with this knight c6 line. And white can take right away or castle. Um, after castling, I would probably uh, play bishop here to unpin the knight. And uh, that seems okay for black. Um, so taking, I think, is the principled move. He's put that bishop out there for a purpose. Why not? Why not take and inflict that pawn damage, and then castle? So this is fine. And then my next move is probably a mistake. Um, there is this kind of a threat of uh, e5. He plays it in the game. And so a couple moves here. The chess engine, well, the uh, opening book suggests bishop g4, uh, which pins the knight and discourages e5 or uh, playing e5 myself, which just totally blocks that idea. And notice this is actually a pretty good structure for black. Um, this gives you a solid center. Normally there's a hole on uh, d5 when you have this structure, but you actually have a pawn ideally placed to defend that. So it's a way of uh, making sense of your pawn structure to play e5 at that point. So both of those moves make sense. Um, black actually can play a lot of different moves in this position. White hasn't really developed a lot of pressure at this point. The chess engine also says uh, can, you could consider queen c7. But I went with g6, and this is not doing anything about this e5 move, and he plays it. So that's correct. And then I went with uh, bishop g7. If you go with d5, um, that's maybe the main move here, but then this, this pawn can be kind of a thorn in your side. So uh, anyway, after bishop g7, we're just out of the opening book. Um, and he went ahead and took. Maybe the strongest way to play this is with uh, rook to e1. If I push on with d5 now, I'll kind of show you what I mean about this pawn being a thorn in your side. The chess engine says white is much better with a simple move like uh, h3. Just uh, taking squares away from this light squared bishop. So it's going to have trouble developing. Um, I guess it gets kicked again if it goes to, um, <clears throat> to uh, f5. And um, let's see, if you play something like e6, then uh, this pawn is keeping this bishop out of the game. It's keeping this bishop shut in, and it's pretty solidly defended, and then this bishop has trouble developing. So it seems like a pretty awkward position for, for black. The chess engine recommends taking, and then after the exchange, um, yeah, black is probably okay here, but you do have to worry for the rest of the game about these isolated c pawns. So it's not 
uh, necessarily a fun position to play, although black should be okay. Uh, but that's the strongest move, Ricky one for uh, for white there. He just went ahead and took, which makes sense as well. Uh, I took back, and then he went with the check. And now here I had uh, a misconception. I was saying the wrong thing during the game. I was saying I couldn't uh, or I shouldn't block with bishop b6 because of knight to uh, g5. But in fact, uh, uh, I can just take the knight there. He hasn't moved his d-pawn. So his knight is not defended on g5. So bishop e6 is, in fact, the best move there. Uh, but this is okay. Let's see. And now queen e2. This is the first move where white starts to uh, give up an advantage. Um, the chess engine would like to just continue with d4. Um, makes a lot of sense just trying to uh, mess up my pawns a little bit further there. And uh, weaken, weaken my center. And also open up a line for his bishop. So a good all-round move. Queen e2 and uh, black is okay. Once again, I could uh, could go bishop e6 immediately, but I played uh, h6 first. He went d3. We could have transposed into this position. I might have played bishop here. He might have moved the pawn, and then I play h6 to keep the knight from coming there. So we get to this position by one move order or another. It seems that black is a little better here. At least uh, this, is a, this is a very strong bishop along this diagonal. Um, yeah, so I prefer black in this position on the chess engine. Gives it a, a slight edge. Let's see, he continues with knight c3 at castle. He goes h3, um, stopping me from pinning his knight. Now the, the, uh, the bishop is free to move. Well, it's not quite free to move because there's a hanging knight behind it. I still have to deal with that, but uh, almost free to move. Anyway, I went with uh, rook b8 here, looking at this b-pawn and discouraging him from moving his bishop. And he played knight a4, which is another slight mistake. Now, you know, what is the knight doing there? It uh, really makes more sense to play a move like knight to e4 and centralize it. And if he, if I push the pawn forward, he can take the c-pawn. So, um, but the move that he played in the game, this, uh, this knight to a4 move, um, the knight doesn't have any good follow-up, right? He's looking at these squares, which are protected, or he can go back. Um, so the next move I made, I played the queen out to try and exploit the position of the knight, but that's uh, it's kind of a, the kind of mistake I often make that uh, stronger players don't. It's, it's you're sort of helping you're helping your opponent make a good move by playing by playing like this. You play queen a5 and his knight goes back and he's actually improved his knight. So the chess engine is suggesting to just ignore the knight, leave it there, and just uh, develop. Rook e8 makes a lot of sense there. Anyway, so queen a5 is a move that I played, and um, and he did drop his knight back. And now my queen is not necessarily in the best spot here. I mean, you can use a move like that to gain a tempo sometimes, but um, but is that really the best spot for my queen? Anyway, uh, he went um, he went knight c3. I went knight to f5 here, looking at the, uh, the d4 square. He went bishop to d2 which is actually a mistake, although um, I didn't uh, figure it out correctly during the game. Instead of uh, bishop d2, the chess engine has this interesting suggestion of uh, g4. Kick that knight, the knight goes to uh, d4, trade it off, and then put this knight onto e4. And it looks like a decent position. If I uh, kick that knight, it can drop back over to uh, g3, I guess, and defend that way. Um, maybe you can develop some pressure against h6 here. So interesting position for white. Um, although I think black is still slightly better in, in all of these lines. But that would be uh, best play. So bishop d2 is a mistake because it leaves this uh, b-pawn undefended. Now during the game I thought I couldn't take the b-pawn because he would play knight to d1 and, and there would be a double attack, the bishop hitting my queen and the knight hitting my rook. But it turns out that's okay. So if you want to uh, think about it, see if you can calculate what would happen after uh, rook takes b2. It's an interesting uh, exercise in calculation. See if you can spot all that is going on there. Okay, uh, pause the video if you want some time to think about it. And certainly it would take uh, more time than that to think about it. So, so feel free. Uh, anyway, I'm going to give the answer away now. After rook takes b2, if he plays this knight d1 line, you can take the pawn on c2. And uh, 
you're pinning that bishop in a way against the queen, although the bishop is hitting your queen and his queen is defended. So you might think this still loses material, but there's one other thing. This, this rook to c2 has done two things. It's, um, it's pinned that bishop in a way, and it's also opened up this diagonal for my bishop. So that was all of the tactics you needed to see. So now if he takes the queen, which maybe he has to at this point, uh, he's, he's uh, probably in trouble otherwise. I can take his queen. He takes my rook back, so he's gained uh, a queen for a rook, but then I grab his rook, and uh, and I've restored the material or the peace balance, and I've gained two pawns, so uh, that's just winning for black. So bishop d2 is a mistake. I could have played rook takes b2, but it would have taken uh, more calculation than I gave it. <laughs> so anyway, I dropped my queen back. And now, uh, let's see, he played rook a, b1. Now he defended b2. And I started pushing on in the center with d5. And here he went knight to e5, and that actually just loses the game. Uh, single, single move blunder. So it's still um, a game that's uh, playable for both sides at this point. And um, let's see, what could he do? He could do, um, instead of knight to um, e5, he could actually play knight a4 here. Now this move makes a little more sense. Now that I've pushed the d-pawn forward, knight a4 hits the c-pawn. Don't necessarily want to push this forward. The chess engine recommends uh, queen d6 here, and then he can play g4, kicking kicking my knight. And uh, so it, we saw this idea in an earlier line. Anyway, that's uh, that would be best play, but uh, he played, and, and the game would continue. It seems uh, playable for both sides. But he went knight e5, and um, yeah, there's a classic case of uh, undermining the defender. It's defended by two pieces and, and attacked by two pieces, so it's uh, it's almost loose. Well, it is uh, it's uh, loose, but not hanging. Uh, so I can attack it by driving away a defender or by by just bringing another piece to attack it. Um, but this move. Uh, drives away the defender, and the queen has no good square to go to. If the queen um, goes here or here, I just take the knight. Uh, the queen comes here. I have knight to c2 with a fork. And um, and let's see, another try would be bishop here, but I just take the queen, and uh, he's better. I I mean, I am better. The queen goes with check, even. So uh, so he has to take back, and then I'll deal with this threat along the diagonal after that. So uh, there's just no good answer here, and after a while, he resigned. So short game, but uh, kind of fun and interesting tactics. So hope you guys enjoyed it, and I will see you again soon. Bye.